up. You're live, Mark. That's You're a heavy <laughs> You are live. We are live. live, says Jackie. Welcome, everybody, to our Success Mastermind for a Thursday, the 3rd of September, 2020. John Lavinia here with you. Not hosting today. We have the mighty, awesome, retired Lieutenant Colonel Mark Riggle, who is going to be uh, thrilling us with tales of something. So I'm excited about that. Uh, I want to acknowledge real quick uh, what uh, just happened this morning. We had our yoga basics class with Nancy Burton Shaw. Nancy, the lovely Nancy, is here with us right now as well. And uh, for those of you who missed that, including myself, you can catch the replay. Um, and Nancy, a quick question on that, since you're you're here with us live, um, is it is it different each week, or like uh, is one recording enough for all of eternity, or like what what is uh, tell us about that. It's different each, it, it'll be different each week, although it's, um, you'll see a lot of repetition. I'm trying to keep it on the basic level for people. So it can be very doable. And so it depends. I mean, and Mary would be a great one to answer that or anybody star who was there. If you want to engage in the last week's recording, you could do that for a while until you got really bored and then go for the next recording. <laughs> but I think okay. you'll find something different, different theme, different kind of energy. So. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. And uh, of course, uh, that is available for all of our members here in the JL Success Mastermind. So if you do not yet have a membership and you're seeing this on YouTube or Facebook, go ahead and grab one now. Uh, because not only do we have that, we also had yesterday, we had Life and Business Tools with Adrian and Ego. And that was business planning part one of three, possibly more than three, but at least three, according to Adrian. And then uh, we did have a kid's corner yesterday, although we may be moving that to a Saturday slot because we didn't have too many kids. There was only one kid who showed up and he was 50 years old and uh, he got to talk to the host, which was a nice one-on-one, -on -one. but we're gonna, we're gonna do, we wanna definitely do something with kids so they can apply principles that I never got until I was a grown up, right? I mean, just, just the idea of perhaps some of the ideas that we can get from some of these books, like Think and Grow Rich, which is the book that we have now. You're all set. Oh, Sorry, I got a little bit of background noise. Uh, you guys? We've been married eight. Microphone. You all. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. So uh, what I was saying is that I didn't get these ideas when I was a kid. And would I have been served had I gotten them? For example, um, we're starting Think and Grow Rich with our book club Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. Right? What if each week we took an idea like chapter one, thoughts or things, right? Well, what does that mean, kids? Tell us about that. You know, when you think that, how, how does that, you know, show up in your life, right? Something to think about, right? And then the chapter on desire, persistence, right? Lots of different resourceful ideas that uh, I wish I would have gotten at a younger age. So that is open for discussion when that's going to uh, resume on the calendar. And then, of course, we ended last night with uh, Networking Magic with Glenn Henderson, who gave us three tips to build customer rapport. And I got to tune in for a little bit of that while I was assembling furniture. And, uh, of course, Glenn's always a treat to listen to. I'm going to start calling you Reverend Glenn Henderson. But uh, thank you, sir, for your service. But, of course, right now, meaning right now, in present time, we've got Mark Riggle. So, Mark, uh, come on out, brother. And uh, what's our topic for today? Hey, John. Um, thank you, everyone. Appreciate uh, everybody being here. Um, I wanted to um, I, I want to take everybody back in time a little bit. Um, I'm going to share my screen here and uh, I want to um, tell a short story, uh, a little bit about uh, my past. I won't get uh, too lengthy, but how I ended up where I got. So the first thing I'm going to do here, I guess, is go to share screen and let's get started. See if I can do this right for everybody. So this is, uh, this is how I uh, envision the, the session going. The one thing I want to comment about uh, the session today is that there'll be a short piece at the very end that I want to kind of close in uh, all that we've talked about, um, and then we can exit after that. But uh, you can see the kind of the time frame, how I see this sort of unfolding, um, and we'll go from there. So. To start off with um, a short story, I was uh, 13, seventh grade, um, you know, and as boys do in those times, uh, we're all vying for position, testosterone starting to take over, 
you know, you got your alpha males, got everybody's kind of getting in line. People are trying sports and, and all that. And, um, you know, I won some, lost some. And one particular day, I got into it with, uh, with a, you know, fellow student. Uh, he was a ninth grader. And um, he pretty much had his way with me and cleaned my clock. And I went home and I was licking my wounds. My dad shows up, um, you know, after work and he can see that um, I uh, been just run through the ringer and um, he didn't, uh, he didn't, he didn't get upset. He just kind of sat me down. We were sitting at the dining room table and it was quiet for a while. And, and, and he could see that I was, you know, kind of still shaking the, you know, the cobwebs out of the head. And he, and he says this comment that uh, you see in front of you. Uh, as long as there are two men on the planet, one will have to dominate and one will have to submit. Paul Arthur Riggle. And um, I thought, well, wow, what, uh, what, you know, what does that really uh, mean? Uh, well, I think in life we're going to find in all our journey, even what we're doing today, um, that there are people that kind of uh, govern or direct things and uh, we need to find out where we sit. Are we, are we the followers or are we the leaders? And I'd say that the ones that are in this group, we're, we're leaders and we're learning to lead even more. Um, fast forward to my junior year. Uh, and by the way, I just, in about 10 minutes, I threw this list together. And the reason I put this uh, and I'm talking about uh, when I make that comment about, you know, put your, you know, past on the, on the footprints, you know, looking to the past, that's in the past, that's history, there's nothing you can really do with it, uh, except, you know, look to it and maybe learn something from it and, and move forward. But all these things, I think, uh, you know, the vast majority of these things have happened uh, to us, uh, you know, one or two or maybe most. Uh, so it's not that we are unique uh, to one another or to life. We are all very experienced in that regard. In any case, so here I am in 11th grade and a rather um, a unique event happened to me. I got approved to, uh, I got accepted to the Naval Academy. And I thought, well, great. You know, my dad, of course, you know, he's beaming uh, a little bit. And he's a, at that time, he's an Air Force Lieutenant Colonel out at the 446 at McCord Air Force Base flying 141s, you know. So, you know, he's probably bragging, to, you know, to his his buds in the office that, you know, his son just got accepted to the Naval Academy. So, and at this time in high school, I was a, I was a gymnast. I, you know, was a ring specialist. I did high bar and, you know, trampoline and vaulting. But rings was really my uh, forte. So fast forward into my senior year, you know, there I'm, I'm getting rated. I'm third in the state uh, for for rings. Uh, my name's kind of getting out there, but I have not elected to go to the Naval Academy yet. And things are kind of changing for me. Uh, I'm still kind of uh, sort of rebellious in my youth. And um, we start closing in towards the end of my senior year. And I apply to Washington State University and I get accepted and I turn down my um, acceptance to the Naval Academy. And my dad wasn't so happy um, about that. So I go to Washington State and, um, and there's a point to all this. I go to Washington State and my first year, I did absolutely fantastic in the social atmosphere. My academics just did poorly. I was about a three, 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 four student in high school. And in those days, that was enough to get into the academies. Now it's probably a three, six or three, eight, but, or maybe in a four, I, I don't know. But um, that's, uh, that's where I was at. And, and I had a great time watching state and went there with my room with my best friend, uh, one of my gymnastics team members and um, did very poorly at Washington State, uh, you know, at the end of 1975 and May of 75. You know, we spent the summer kind of working, doing part-time jobs and uh, kind of deciding whether I wanted to do next. One day, John walks up to me and says, hey, look, man, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, going in the Marine Corps. And I go, what? Yeah, he says, yeah, I'm going to go in the Marine Corps, I think. He says, how about we both go? And so we went down. We didn't go to any of the other uh, yeah, any of the other branches, we went right into, uh, you know, right into the Marine Corps recruiting office. And so we want to go in on the uh, buddy program. And that's exactly what we did. We ended up in the same platoon together in uh, October 3rd of 1975. And this is how it looked for me at about 11 o'clock at night on October 3rd. I was like those guys in that middle bottom screen there, uh, all standing on the yellow footprints the infamous yellow footprints at a 45 degree angle with the heels locked. 
and I was looking at like uh, those those drill instructors that you see in the top right. That's the kind of guys I was looking at, and they all <laughs> were all buff. They were all tough. They were all Vietnam vets um, coming out of uh, you know out of Vietnam, so they were fresh out of combat operations. They were no nonsense group. So. You know, the first few nights that I was in boot camp, I was uh, starting to, you know, reassess uh, what I what I had gotten put myself into. And I was like, oh, my gosh, what did I just do? And they didn't mince any words. And just like the guy down the lower right hand side, it was all mouth and it was in my face. And it was um, it was a, an awakening. And just like we are in now with what we're doing here, with what has happened in this country and, and the world with COVID and all that. Uh, we all are in sort of those same positions. We've lost jobs. We're out there trying to figure out what we're going to do next. And that's sort of where I'm going with this, uh, this whole point of a boot camp mindset. You have to, it's, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, but we have to step up. And I th I'd say that in, in many regards, we have stepped up. Now we're in the JLSM group. And, you know, we're taking, we're taking life by the reins. We haven't really skipped a beat and we're moving on. So I commend everybody who is here. Um, so um, I wanted to take a break for just a moment and I wanna set this up a little bit more. I have two short, um, uh, two short scenes. I'd like to know, um, who has seen Full Metal Jacket? Has everybody seen Full Metal Jacket? Ooh, boy, have you got something in store for you. Uh, this is a, and I'll just forewarn you, uh, the, the two scenes are kind of the beginning scenes. The first one isn't so bad, the haircut scene. Uh, and, and the reason I put that in there is it's, I, I'd like you to maybe take some notes and what kind of things come to mind that uh, why why does everybody get a haircut when they go into boot camp? There are it's more than just hygiene. Okay, there's a, there's a reason, and we'll talk about that at the end. Uh, and then uh, I call it the squad bay, but this is the big opening scene where Arlie Ermy comes in as drill instructor Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, and he just rails. And and I'll give you guys uh, some. Uh, by the way, um, this movie is based on a true story. This Gustav Hosford, this guy was a Marine. He was a kind of combat correspondent uh, working at 1st Marine Division, where I retired out of, by the way. And um, so these, uh, much of this, and I've seen a number of, um, you know, uh, of these guys who do the, these critics, and they say, yeah, this is, well, there's a few differences in the book. Um, most of it is actually pretty accurate. So when you see the movie, uh, well, um, well, a couple of things are, you know, are made for, for movies. Uh, most of it's pretty good. And, and what I'll say um, regarding these, particularly the squad base scene with Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, and it is, uh, I'll give you a warning, it's, um, it's full of some really colorful language. And what I experienced was far times worse than that. So uh, when you see that and you're doing one of these or you're like, uh, you know, if you don't want to watch this, you can, uh, you know, den your sound or however you want to do this. But that's where we're going to go with this. So uh, just kind of a warning to let you know. So let's see if I can now do my, um, see if I can share my screen and get to the stuff that I want to get to for this effort. And the first thing I'm going to do is the opening scene. And um, John, I think I'm supposed to do one thing in this. Aren't I supposed to do one thing here and I'm supposed to, where do I do that at? So I can share this. You're asking me how you do the thing at the place with the Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna yeah. stop share first. You, you do the thing, you click the button and on the thing, yeah. I have yeah, no idea. You Share computer sound. So <laughs> when this comes open, when this starts, just so you're aware, you, the sound may be really loud. Uh, so just be prepared that, that uh, that's a possibility. Okay. Um, so be ready to turn your sound down if it's a little bit too loud and I'll see what I can do on this end as well. So here we go for the first scene. Involves us one and 
fighting that will break us up again. Goodbye, my darling, hello, Vietnam. I'm here to take a battle to be won. Kiss me goodbye and write me while I'm gone. Goodbye, my sweetheart, hello, So that's the uh, the first scene, and we'll come out of that, and then I'll go to the next one. This uh, this is pretty colorful, so just be prepared. But um, like I say, this is this is um, I went what what I saw even my first few days was was on steroids compared to this. I am Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, your senior drill instructor. From now on, you will speak only when spoken to. And the first and last words out of your filthy sewers will be, sir. Do you maggots understand that? Sir. sir, yes, sir. Bullshit, I can't hear you. Sound off like you got a pair. Sir, yes, sir. If you ladies leave my island, if you survive recruit training, you will be a weapon. You will be a minister of death praying for war. But until that day, you are pukes. You are the lowest form of life on earth. You are not even human fucking beings. You are nothing but unorganized, grabastic pieces of amphibian shit. Because I am hard, you will not like me. But the more you hate me, the more you will learn. I am hard, but I am fair. There is no racial bigotry here. I do not look down on niggers, kites, wops, or greasers. Here you are all equally worthless. And my orders are to weed out all non-hackers who do not pack the gear to serve in my beloved corps. Do you maggots understand that? Sir, yes, sir. Bullshit, I can't hear you. Sir, yes, sir. What's your name, scumbag? Sir, Private Brown, sir. Bullshit, from now on, you're Private Snowball. Do you like that name? Sir, yes, sir. Well, there's one thing that you won't like, Private Snowball. They don't serve fried chicken and watermelon on a daily basis in my mess hall. Sir, yes, sir. Is that you, John Wayne? Is this me? Who said that? Who the fuck said that? Who's the slimy little communist shit twinkle toad cocksucker down here who just signed his own death warrant? Nobody, huh? The very fucking godmother said it. I'm fucking standing. I will PT you all until you fucking die. I'll PT you until your assholes are sucking buttermilk. Was it you, you scroungy little fuck, huh? Sir, no, sir. You little piece of shit, you look like a fucking worm. I bet it was you. Sir, no, sir. Sir, I said it, sir. Well, no shit. What have we got here? A fucking comedian, private joker. I admire your honesty. Hell, I like you. You can come over to my house and fuck my sister. <clears throat> you little scumbag. I got your name. I got your ass. You will not laugh. You will not cry. You will learn by the numbers. I will teach you. Now get up. Get on your feet. You had best unfuck yourself or I will unscrew your head and shut down your neck. Sir, yes, sir. Private Joker, why did you join my beloved goal? Sir, to kill, sir. So you're a killer. Sir, yes, sir. Let me see your war face. Sir. You got a war face? Ah! That's a war face. Now let me see your war face. Ah! Bullshit! You didn't convince me! Let me see your real war face! Ah! You don't scare me! Work on it! Sir, yes, sir! What's your excuse? Sir, excuse for what, sir? I'm asking the fucking questions here, Private. Do you understand? Sir, yes, sir! Well, thank you very much. Can I be in charge for a while? Sir, yes, sir! Are you shook up? Are you nervous? Sir, I am, sir! Do I make you nervous? Sir! Sir, what? Are you about to call me an asshole? Sir, no, sir! How tall are you, Private? Sir, five foot nine, sir! Five foot nine? I didn't know they stacked shit that high. You trying to squeeze an inch in on me somewhere, huh? Sir, no, sir! Bull <laughs> Well, I hope I get your attention. Um, the idea around 
Marine Corps boot camp is to make a uh, make really a break. The, the idea is that they want to break it down and they want to make you into what they want you to be. Um, and in some of the same respects, although this is, this is obviously different, um, this environment, um, we are having to make some really, um, we are having to make a break with our past and move forward. And I think this, uh, this venue and the different uh, things that we're doing in e-commerce do just the same. Um, so what I want to do is I'd like to open this up uh, to everybody, and I'd like to hear your thoughts about this. I know this is kind of stark, and I recommend, it, it was a fairly well-acclaimed movie. I recommend that you watch the whole thing because there's a lot more to this than just that. But the idea is that I'm trying to um, set up, again, the mindset, looking at, look at how much, you know, how much you can really go through the, the the kind of turmoil, the kind of frustration, all that goes on, and you just think that you are, you know, you're about to die. Uh, life is coming at you, um, and, and you just don't know where to turn. I mean, I felt that every single day uh, in boot camp. It just you get used to this, uh, believe it or not. You learn how to adapt. And this is what we are doing, maybe on a different level, but this is what we're doing today with these moves that we have to make into our new lives, so to speak. So um, why don't we kick things off? Sandy, uh, why don't you come on out? And then after Sandy, it looks like it will be uh, Jamie and Therese. Sandy? I think I put my hand up, Mark, earlier to okay. answer your question. Have you seen the movie? Oh, okay. All right. So, Did you? Okay. Nothing at the, well, I've seen the movie and it still blows me away. Great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Jamie is, uh, is next. And then after Therese and then Gail. I wanted to comment on the haircut that I, my opinion of that is that it puts everybody on the same level. It, it, it basically, it's an, an equality, uh, uh, brings every, I just, just, there's, there's no, there's no one, there's no one different person from the standpoint of appearances, my guess would be, and the, the shock value of everybody's going to look the same and do the same and be the same type of thing. Um, whether that's the actual truth or not. Uh, that's uh, my opinion on that one. That's all I wanted to, wanted to comment on. Great. That's it, Jamie? Yeah, I, well, unless you want to give that answer. You... <laughs> uh, we'll get to that. I, I actually, I did write down a list on both. Uh, and so when we get there, we'll see uh, where we stand. We'll see if we were all kind of thinking along the same lines. Okay. Uh, next right. up is uh, Therese and then Gail and then Bill. Hi, Mark. Um, pretty, hey, powerful, pretty powerful, pretty uh, powerful <laughs> way to start our day. Um, you have <laughs> my attention for sure. And uh, kudos to you uh, for having the mental fortitude and strength to um, have a, obviously a fulfilling career for yourself um, and protect us and your country. Um, I would say the haircut scene it's really about taking away the sense of identity or uniqueness, but the purpose obviously being um, to unify the group, right? To, um, which I think, you know, connects a little bit to what we're doing. I mean, we are, you know, essentially on the front lines here. We're learning, um, the learning curve is tremendous, like running uphill with weights on our boots, right? And, and um, we are, together, like this group, the JLSM group, I mean, we're here to support each other, which not unlike um, in the Marine Corps, right? I mean, it's about that treatment, that, that submission, that humiliation, it's about breaking you and allowing you to unify, think as one and move forward, right? Um, and to, I think also, um, think of each other as a family and protect each other out there, et cetera. And I, I don't know, I guess for me, that's a little bit like what we're doing. We're all on our own path, but yet we, um, 
you know, we're here, we're unified. This, this unifies us and, and we all want to, each other to succeed. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Therese. Um, great, great input. Appreciate that very much. Uh, Gail and then Bill, then Stuart. Hi. Um, last week, I think it was, somebody mentioned the name of a book in the chat there. And I'm in the middle of listening to that now on my audio thing. And it's part book and part podcast. It's really, really good. And it's about David Goggins. And the name of the book is Can't Hurt Me. And the things that he went through and the, um, it, in the military and he, he became a seal and he, be, and he ran uh, with broken shins and so many things that he did to rise above everything. And he um, talks about how we can all go past the moment of when we think we can't go anymore. You can go ahead. You break through that barrier with your mind. And um, if anybody wants to have a, a, a great listen, I think it's better than the book because you actually hear him in a podcast being interviewed along with the story being read. But it's amazing what he says, how the mind, how powerful our mind is and how we can change ourselves and our future um, just with the power of our mind. And um, that reminds me of, you know, the, what you just showed us with the stuff that that movie shows. And he went even more into things that were done to him. And it was, it's just amazing. And it's amazing what we as human beings are capable of. And I have to keep reminding myself of that. So that was all I wanted to say. Thank you, Gail, for uh, sharing that. And just as um, so everybody understands, there, there are a number of people who want to talk, so I'm going to keep it uh, brief and just keep moving down the list. I will respond to um, your comments at the end, and I think you're going to find actually uh, there's a lot more alignment than, <laughs> than you realize. So, um, Bill, you're next, then Stuart, and then Kim. Hi, Mark. Hi, everybody. Hey, Bill. Uh, just... Uh... A, thank you very much for that. Uh, it reminded me when I'm getting a bit peed off with all this shenanigans of uh, trying to organize things and do things. Oh, yeah, I remember I used to do that sort of shit. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for jogging the memory. And uh, I'm just going to say to you, Mark, uh, whilst I may be on a small island in the middle of nowhere here and you're... Uh, back in a, a rather large place. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you for your service. Yeah. That's it, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it. Um, Stuart, Kim, and then Joseph Saka. Come on out, Stuart. What you got, brother? Oh, my God. I'm, I feel so traumatized by that. <laughs> uh, really? <laughs> I got to get back on my mental diet. A um, couple things with that. One, uh, yeah, now I know why uh, I didn't join the military. A um, couple things. Um, the haircut thing is very interesting, right? Um, hair, we, uh, we tend to um, define ourselves by our appearances, right? And, and, you know, it's part of the mask that we all wear, right, is our, uh, you know, physical appearance and what, what we want other people to perceive us as and things like that. And I think that to echo um, what Jamie was saying in terms of um, the great equalizer and kind of uh, uh, you know uh, creating a, 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 a culture of sameness, let's say. Um, but I also, when I think about that, I, I, even for myself, and okay, I don't, I haven't cut my hair since like 11th grade, but um, but I shave, and <laughs> when I shave, I feel like a sense of renewal and rebirth and I feel like I'm stripping off the old stuff, right? So there's the, to me, there's this psychological kind of rebirth about it. I don't know if anybody else would, would agree. Um, I think it's also about, I think it's also about stripping away um, your old identity because you're, you are now, uh, you know, reborn 
as uh, as a soldier, as an officer, or whatever that is, right? So that's kind of what I get from that. Um, and then um, I did a, a quick little research, and I think that the haircut tradition started with the Continental Army and George Washington. So it's it's a tradition that goes back before the founding of our country. Um, thanks, Mark. Thanks for your service, man. I have so much honor, uh, respect uh, for you. So thanks for sharing all that, dude. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you very much. Uh, Kim, then Joseph, and then the magnet. <laughs> Hi, um, hi everyone, and um, Mark, I, I echo what Stuart says. I have so much respect for you and thank you so much for your service. Um, that was definitely very powerful. Um, forgot I had seen that that long time ago, but um, I'm gonna try and pull all this together here. Uh, the haircut, um, yeah, I, I definitely feel like they break you down um, so that you realize that you're all the same and um, you know, you're not the only one, you know, your focus is for the team, you know, you're there for the team and your focus is to be one with the team. Um, and then I put in the chat earlier, you know, out of brokenness comes restoration. So they break you down, you know, to restore you, to prepare you for what you have uh, in store for you. And somebody put in the chat something about submission. And, uh, you know, personally, I believe that you cannot be a leader until you know how to submit to authority. So they're teaching you how to submit to authority and, and, you know, do what it is that you need to do because, you know, when you're out there on the battlefield, you can't have any heroes, you know, you're just, you're all out there to accomplish, you know, accomplish a mission and um, you need to work together as a team. So, um, and then I think about the whole team mindset and I don't know if any of you watch Naked and Afraid, but um, a friend of mine uh, recommended that and I started watching it and I thought, what in God's name, are you kidding me? Why would they want to do that? but I watched some of them all the way through and to see them, you know, to see what they go through and to see them come to victory after that is pretty powerful. And, and, and if they make it as a team, um, it, it's pretty neat to see, you know, how they're just completely broken, you know, their bug bites and, you know, all these things that they endure. Um, but once they make it through, like there's just this unity um, amongst them. So that's great, Kim. Thank you, mate. Thank you. You kind of cut out there towards the end, uh, Kim. Um, I just want to make sure we're capturing all that you said. So you good? Okay. Thank you. Uh, next up, Joseph, Saka, and then uh, John. Yeah, Mark. Uh, you know, thanks. Um, we just brought back uh, so many memories. Uh, <laughs> I had a near more reader for a uh, for a DI. And uh, <clears throat> it was almost identical. And, but that was the basic thing is, as far as that initial haircut, you know, getting everybody at the same level is, you know, and the brick is completely down, build us back up to where they wanted us to be. But where we wanted to be actually <clears throat> is a, a team. Uh, and that's what we're doing here. Um, you know, it's possible for people to do it uh, themselves but when you have a team, anything is possible. You know, we can all do anything. And uh, I thank you for your service. And I really appreciate this. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you for yours. John, the master. Oh, here I am. Uh, I had to log in uh, as myself on another device so I can raise my hand. So I got, a, I got so much out of this and I've seen the movie a few times. But uh, having not been in the military, at least not in this body, uh, in this lifetime, uh, it's, it's more like voyeurism. You know, it's, it's like, all right, so that's, that's an interesting path. Uh, one that I did not, for my own reasons, I did not go down. I grew up as an abused child with a Vietnam vet Marine Corps dude. But that was my stepfather. Um, anyway, so, so for me, I rejected that, that path. It's like, oh, this is what it is. Right. If this is the if this is the product, if that's the product of that, well, don't sign me up for that. Right. I, I believe that we all have, um, you know, good, good in us. And, and, uh, and I, I had a hard time forgiving that guy for a long, long, long time. In fact, I, I turned to run on the streets and drugs and everything else, having grown up in that, that sort of an environment. Would it have been better to not be to, to not have a father? Right. I mean, that's another if we look systemically at, at like what's going on in the world a lot of fatherless parents, a lot of single parent households, 
right? What does that produce? Look at the crime rates in inner cities and stuff like that. So, so yeah, there's definitely um, the need for a mother and a father, mm -hmm. if you ask me, right? But what leads, here's the question that came up for me, what leads someone into that path? And I'm sure it's different for different people. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut off my hair. What does that mean to me? That means I'm conforming, which is another thing I don't like. Okay, because the kings of old had long hair, but the slaves were all shaved, right? So am I a slave now? Is that what I'm, so again, I, I, I sense in myself rejection of that scene. Again, as a, a voyeuristically or looking at it, you know, as an outsider, I can say that's, that's good entertainment. And perhaps that's the right path for some people, but is it the right path for me? The answer was no in my life. Now I'm 50. So I guess, you know, that, that ship has sailed. I don't think I could change my mind at this point. Uh, and on the other hand, tremendous respect, tremendous respect for, for people who, who that is their path. I think the point is, as entrepreneurs, we all have different paths. And while, and while in some ways, yes, we, we, place, we place our preferences, we subordinate our preferences for the goal. And I think that's the message that I really got out of all this, right? As Gunnery Sargent is walking around, right? Screaming at people in their faces, okay? So I don't care what you are, what you identify as, none of that. Okay, so I'm gonna turn you into to, you know, killing machines begging for war. All right, so like your purpose here, the, thing, the mission you signed up to do is higher than your preferences or thoughts about it or any personalities that are involved with this. So for me, that's, that's huge because yes, certainly I had to adopt that sort of um, subordinating my preferences to an ideal, to a purpose. Otherwise I wouldn't be here, right? So my best thinking got me what broke miserable on the streets right that was my best thinking so so much for that right let me now submit to someone else's best thing why do we read all these books right johann goethe said uh, all intelligent thoughts have already been thought all we got to do is try and think them again okay great so let me read some of this stuff and see how much of it i could apply into my own life and so and so to to see that to see that specific display which i did not personally experience at least not in this lifetime um, it's, it's interesting to me to see what parts of it I can use and what parts of it I still to this day reject. Like, no, I'm, I'm an individual. In fact, where does all innovation come from? Not from the group, not from an agenda that I now will supplicate myself to, but through observation as an individual, which later on in that movie, for those who have, have seen it, right? They're into this, this torn up, you know, battle and, you know, they, they got to make some decisions. Right, they got to make some decisions. They don't have Gunny there saying, you, know, "You do that, you do that." No, they they damn well better lead. Okay, so so the rest of the story isn't you're a machine and you do what you're told. The rest of the story is now you know what to do. Now go make decisions. So that's the the you know the the bright um, silver lining that I get out of that is that great. Now you're competent. Now please go get some rank, right, and go make this happen. What's I remember that that line from um, uh, Saving Private Ryan where, where uh, Tom Hanks, the, the captain, is being asked by some of his subordinates, uh, what is our mission, sir? Right, because it seemed like he was taking them off mission. He said, to win the war, right? So keeping the bigger purpose in mind, and then we're gonna make some decisions based on you know, tactics. So anyway, Mark, uh, interesting stuff, uh, very different for our morning discussions here. Well, evening for, I guess it's movie night for, for our friends in England. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for all you do, and uh, an interesting. Hopefully, people found use in in this in this these ideas that uh, were depicted. Thank you, sir. Thank you, John. And uh, yeah, there's a little bit more to follow uh, after sharing here, and actually, with what you have just said, and um, we're kind of leading into that point. There'll be a sort of a transition moment here, and um, I think it will. Um, It'll make people realize that, yeah, while we started out was something rather um, kind of uh, aggressive, uh, I think when we see what the end result is, again, we've done sort of a mini boot camp. We've made a transition and an, and an awareness. So we'll get there. Wayne, you're up. Go ahead. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I really appreciate you sharing your experience and uh, everything that you bring. And I think. Um, you know, for me, when I when I think of boot camp, and I've never been in that situation, I was actually an air cadet at, at one stage, and it's uh, it's a walk in the park compared to uh, you know what you're showing there and what you're saying that you experienced. But you know, feeling some of that adversity, and in my own life, some experiences at camps that I was on um, as a teenager, uh, and just some of the feelings that I went through, 
Um, and in, in one particular camp, I actually uh, was calling my parents every day and, and uh, got them to come and pick me up. My dad came and picked me up from this camp. I didn't finish it. And the, the, the thing with that particular camp is I had one of the highest um, uh, scores. It was a, an air systems course. And uh, I was like 98% average on all my technical stuff. And, uh, and yet I didn't make it through that camp um, from, from the mental side of things. And when I look back on that in my life, I don't regret that I left um, because it taught me something about me um, that I needed to learn. And later in life did many other things um, that, um, that that experience itself, the, the hardness of that experience and, and some of the things that I, I didn't like in that moment that actually helped me get through other experiences and moments in my life that I didn't like. So, you know, for me, boot camp is preparing people mentally. It's, uh, it's helping people to understand that they have a resourcefulness that they never really uh, even imagined was possible, that they have a resilience, that there's that thing they call grit. Um, because they, in, in what they're about to go face, um, there is no way to simulate that on home soil and, and, and boot camp, I think is one of those things that the military has, has put together to, to help people understand what it is in themselves that is gonna get them through a moment. And I read, I don't know if anybody's read it, but Andy McNabb's one of my favorite authors, um, Bravo 2-0, yes. um, when he tells his story in Iraq um, and he was on a mission, waiting, 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 got dropped into enemy territory, but they were in a wrong location and ended up right in the middle of, a, of an enemy camp. And it was a small group and they ended up getting split up and he was on his own. And, you know, I think the things that he learned in boot camp were the things that got him through that experience and that he survived because it was all about his mental fortitude. It was about his resourcefulness. It was about his, his ability um, to be resilient in the situations he was in. Um, so, you know, to me, that's what that breaking down is. It's about, and from a literature point of view, you know, the protagonist in any series, and I mentioned this the other week about there needs to be um, some adversity. And in, in, in literature, the, the tendency of, of, of a character to go to a point where they're almost at rock bottom, and then they need to reach down inside themselves and pull something out of themselves that they never thought was possible in order to overcome odds, um, which would seem impossible to overcome. And, you know, I think, you know, what you're telling us here is, as we, as we enter the business world, as we enter whatever endeavor that we're on, um, it could be a relationship, could be anything, that there will be adversities that hit us that nobody has prepared us for. Um, you know, and thinking of, of airline pilots as they go into sim sessions, um, airline pilots have a cushy life outside of sim sessions 99.999999% of the time. And I don't say that, I mean, they work hard and they've worked hard to get what they get and, and respectfully um, are professionals at what they do. But it's the sim sessions um, where they're throwing things rapidly um, in series of events that make it possible that when they get true adversity, and I've mentioned Sully before, and it was on the, ch the chat here earlier, um, that when a, a situation arises that there is a potential to overcome that they can overcome because of the adversity that they've practiced with and, and been simulating at other stages in their life. So I know I've spoken a lot there, but you know, to me, that's what this is about. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, and actually, it's, uh, I, I read that book too. And I guess the, just briefly, the, the, the most, uh, the critical moment for me was uh, sort of the, 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 at the same time that they are, they've got a, you know, the the SAS guys have this real purpose and this mission in mind. They have a chance. Uh, maybe that's not the right word, but they have a chance because they get compromised by that shepherd boy. And do they get rid of the shepherd boy and and keep their mission silent, or do they let him go uh, as a matter of humanity and comp potentially compromise themselves? They did the latter, and that's exactly what happened. So um, while they, while you know, they let it go, and these guys are carrying two hundred nine pound, uh, you know, um, Gurkha packs up to their layup point for miles. I mean, these guys, this is a tough breed. These guys are there's, they're no kidding. Those SAS and SBS guys are the real deal. Um, Edward, and then Mandy. Thank you, Mark. 
Thank you, Mark. Uh, every time you bring up a topic, I, I, I can't help thinking about uh, how lucky the people who served with you were, because uh, you seem quite an able leader. Maybe that's the best way I should put it. Thank you. Uh, I thought about, I didn't do military myself. Uh, and, and, and from what you've said, if it is, uh, if the reality is a bit, I mean, many times worse than what I have watched, I, I think I'm glad I didn't. Uh, but I've been reflecting on uh, my own experience. I was uh, born in a country called Uganda. And some of you might have heard of um, uh, dictators like Idi Amin, mm -hmm. who was uh, a one-time president of that little country. And uh, as I grew up, there were a lot of things that were happening in that country, not only in that country, around, in the countries around, but uh, I'll speak from my experience. In, in Uganda, a lot of political turmoil, you know, for a small country with a short history of independence. There have been numerous leaders, presidents, uh, political turmoil, lawlessness, anarchy, you know, the, the institutions that were supposed to protect the people instead uh, antagonized the people. You know, people were afraid of the military. People were afraid of the police. And it seemed to me that it is in such worse situations that the best out of people tended to come out because people tended to have each other's back, you know. They, they looked at themselves as, uh, you know, one. They protected each other. They supported each other in all that adversity. And looking at that clip, especially the one of, um, of the parade, I I'm thinking there's a lot of psychology in, uh, in uh, getting people, recruits, to be the best that they can be. Because that is a clear emulation of a worst situation that you can ever be in. Uh, you know, I, I can't imagine how you know, the recruits feel when they go through that, not only once, but repeatedly for all the time that they are within the training. And I think that in the process, in every moment of darkness, it seems there are countless opportunities for some light to come out. And that's when these people become strong and they become united and they become one so that they can work together to achieve that ultimate goal that they are in that place for. So uh, I'm thinking there's a lot of psychology in there. I don't know, but that's just my, my thought. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Edward. Uh, appreciate the comments. And, um, you know, we could talk uh, offline uh, another time, too. I spent uh, six months in Kenya in 2003. And, um, you know, uh, was there when the transition of when the rat boy was leaving. Um, and not that I know a lot about uh, Uganda, but um, that whole environment I actually loved uh, Kenya. But uh, it is a very interesting um, area, the, you know, the continent and what goes on there. Um, so I learned a lot, a, a lot that I, a lot of um, life's, I guess, um, information that, um, you know, when you're on the ground, when boots are on the ground, you get a much different perspective. So, um, and it was a wonderful thing, you know, not the only game in town, so to speak. Um, uh, Mandy is next, and that's our last share, at least I have on it for now, and I'm going to go back to the slide for a minute after that. So go ahead, Mandy, jump on in here. Hi, Mark. Um, hey, mine's probably going to be rather more controversial, I think. Um, it's not <laughs> going to necessarily be saying the same thing. Um, it doesn't take anything away from respect that I have for you for being in the Marines, etc., or anybody else. Um, when I see things like what you showed, 
and I can watch the films, but when I see somebody shouting at somebody else, it makes me angry um, for the person who's being shouted at. So the haircut is whatever people have been saying, but I would say it takes away the individuality because I don't want individuals there. They have to be, yes, for some reason, they have to be part of a team. And this might be because I'm British and I don't necessarily get the Marines. Um, I can understand why they want to break I can understand in the, because they're going to have to go out to war why they want them to be part of the team. But I still feel that personally they can do that without necessarily having to break them down. So where well, your first quote was, as long as there are two men on the planet, one will have to dominate and one will have to submit. That tends to be how people live, but I don't agree with it. I think people can work together. So when you had the, um, what Swallows and Amazons, whatever it was where they went on, no, it wasn't, there was something else. Oh, um, Lord of the Flies. Um, they want, there was something recently and instead of them fighting each other they actually started working together and I think the world would be a much better place if people work together rather than having to dominate and one having to submit um, I'm, um, some people that would be shouted out like that way wouldn't survive, they would be destroyed sometimes you get parents coming back from the military who talk to their kids in the same way um, and I've been following something called screen free parenting and it's not, it's the opposite to what I would would want so from what I saw from it, um, I'd probably want to thump him back if it was a thing. <laughs> what Dom said about conformity, yeah, I don't, I would not, I don't like conformity either. And I don't, I don't, and some of me, and again, it's not taking anything away from you, I don't understand why people would want to do it. Why you, why would you actually want to go through that? And that's probably my naivety rather than anything else. But that was my thoughts on it. Yeah. Thank you, Mandy. Um, actually, that's great, and and you comment on Lord on the fly, uh, Lord of the Flies, um, and and then I, I've got I've got a slide here that I think will um, will will uh, approach people with um, the comments that we've made, and that's where we're going next. So I okay. appreciate everybody who has made comments um, and uh, reached out. So we're going to go back to share screen, um, and we're and I'll show you what I put down uh, before um, before this just so everybody can see what I um, had put. And it's interesting that the people that I am sharing uh, my life with right now in this JLSM environment, isn't it funny how we are all, I mean, look at all the things that I just kind of said, okay, this is what I get from this. And this is, these are just as I watch this and I haven't watched the movie for a while. And I only watched a few scenes of kind of picking which ones I wanted to pull out. I actually thought about doing maybe something more that talked about transition where there's one part and John can attest anybody seen the movie where they're climbing this really tall uh, obstacle and uh, Joker is helping, um, you know, um, he's helping um, Lawrence uh, over the top of uh, this thing and you start to see the assistance and, and the teamwork and, and somebody being a leader and helping uh, helping and get over. So if you haven't seen the movie, I know the beginning of it is uh, is kind of rough in that way, but as, as you go through this, once you get through and you get into those other scenes, and John had mentioned this as well, it starts to see, uh, and as Joseph had mentioned, it's a whole breakdown and then a buildup uh, of people. So really trying to remove any semblance of individuality and, and your past because they want people to come together and, and all this many things that were said here um you guys are right on target um so uh i wanted to, I, I was just kind of kind of brainstorming here and i thought okay so who who are we and all the things that we've just um, witnessed in these uh, these two little scenes and the things that we've been going through in the John Lavinia Success Mastermind course thus far, I'd say this, uh, I wouldn't say this is an all-encompassing list, but I was just kind of thinking out of the box a little bit. And uh, we have such a powerful group here with, um, with the kind of knowledge and expertise and, and the backgrounds and the willingness to share and what John as the catalyst has brought together for us. And, and I, I lead you to, uh, and, and all the things that we're having to relearn uh, because of these changes that have occurred in our life and this new direction that we're going. 
And the last line, I just, I was thinking last night a little bit, I said, you know, how do I bring this together? How do I say this? And I really want to uh, put a, John, um, I mean, this from my heart, brother. I, I did not know that uh, your, um, your stepdad was that, but I understand because, you know, in that regard, um, having PTS myself and having had to deal with it, and I actually ran the, uh, the, um, the Wounded Warrior Barracks uh, at Camp Pendleton after I came back in 2004 from Fallujah. And I saw guys there, you know, one guy who had a 762 um, bullet lodged in the back of his throat. They couldn't dig it out and he tasted metal when he ate. We had, guy, we had one guy who had global amnesia. He didn't even remember his three kids and family or parents. I mean, there were, there, uh, the list is endless for the things that I observed. And uh, the reason I mentioned that is I just want to bring together you know, we, we have this family and we have, we have this, this force. We have this guy who has spent 20 or 30 years of his life pulling us all together and we're learning all this and he's training us and he's teaching us much like boot camp. We are sort of the platoon that's in boot camp going through this and we're gaining that knowledge and now we are going to be his task force in a way to the next level of people who start to come into this organization, come in to do the things that we're doing here. Uh, and, 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 and we still gain uh, success on our own. And, and I particularly want to make sure that it's understood that the reason that we can do this as a group and work with each other is because one of the key ingredients to John's, uh, at least in my opinion, my humble opinion, the reason to the success is because he is still focusing on individual accountability and responsibility. That is absolutely necessary. You must take, nobody gives you responsibility. You take responsibility for the actions and the things you're doing. And by doing that, we can then share that and help each other out. Where I'm weak, I can look to somebody for strength. And that's, I, I just, uh, maybe I'm, I'm going too deep in this. I'm getting a little too uh, aggressive about it, but I just really see, uh, I'm passionate. I just, I see such a great group of people and my destiny that I'm beginning to see is really in this environment. I, I had no idea, but as soon as within a week or two that I was listening to John, I could see things happening in my life that were changing me. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, this cannot be coincidence. There's a reason that I'm starting to think this way. So I, I, I give John a lot of uh, hell. I give him virtually all credit along with this, uh, this family that I have surrounded myself with that I've been able to participate with. So I give you all kudos and I'm really glad to be here. And I leave it with this again, you know, James Allen, uh, James Allen's another one of those. Um, I, I love this uh, quote. And again, you know, we go back to some of the comments that people have made. Yes. We, you know, you're in boot camp. You're we're in this environment. Yeah, the external um, forces that are upon us, but it is us who decide how we are going to react to that. And uh, the last thing I'll say to Mandy, kind of to your point, I uh, you know we have you know, we've always heard this. You know, you have the wolves and you have the sheep. Well, my answer to the wolves and the sheep is, as a leader, I'm going to be the sheep dog. I'm going to be the go between. And I'm going to be the one that's the protectorate in one end, but I'm going to be the leader on the other and help share and move people along to the next phase of their lives. And with that, I'll leave you that with this for just a couple seconds, you know, from me as a young recruit to me as a retiree and um, on the top of a nondescript undisclosed location on the east side of Fallujah in 2004. Um, been there done that, seen some interesting things, and I'm still alive. And Glenn, what'd you say? You know, I didn't, you know, you're still alive, right? Didn't kill you. So here you are. So, and with that, I will leave that alone. And thank you very much. And John, the baton is yours. Well, thank you, Mark. And, uh, and thank you everyone who, who shared. And I got some books on the shelf while we were doing all this. So uh, it's all coming together. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to tonight. And uh, Mark, thank you again for your, your um, thought provoking uh, ideas here today. Um, tonight, of course, is Brand Builder with Shannon. So those of you who are looking to build an online brand 
and uh, stand you know, head and shoulders above all the vanilla stuff that's going out in the marketplace, right? Really make your mark. Get together with us tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern US time for Brand Builder. And of course, if you're on the other side of the planet and you're asleep at that time, we will have all that recorded for you. So uh, Mark and everyone else, thanks again and uh, make it a great day because you absolutely deserve it. So glad we're here together. All right, we'll see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you, John.